This is the unboxing for the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. I have here the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. This is the second Master Grade Extreme kit produced by Bandai. The very first one was a MGEX Verka, which was the Unicorn Gundam. So it took quite a while for them to do the second kit. I think the Unicorn Gundam Verka came out by like 2016 or so. So it's at time of recording, it's been about, what, five, uh, seven years or so. So they definitely took their time. They decided what suit they wanted to do. And I've got to say, from just looking at the runners when I was preparing this video, things look really, really good for this. I'm very excited to be building this. Now, the, with this kit, it has a very detailed, I would say, perfect grade, unleashed level inner frame, which has multiple layers, multiple colors, um, most of the colors being, um, at least the external ones being, uh, metallic coated ones, which is why I'm, I'm going to be wearing gloves for every aspect of this uh, build, just because I don't want to get fingerprints all over things. So what I'm going to be doing is for this mobile suit, I'm going to be doing two series of build videos. The first series will be the inner frame, and that's actually how the manual is split. You first build the inner frame, then you build the rest, and I'm going to do the backpack and the external, i.e. body armor stuff all together, you know, with the weapons. So steps three through four will be together. Step one is the inner frame. And as you can see here, there's multiple, it's showing the various layers and things that go on it, and it's very, very detailed. So I'll be doing two, one being the inner frame, and then a second series of videos for everything else. Now, the first series, unlike um, my other series where I do an unboxing and review video together, for this first series, which is just the interframe, I'll do the full unboxing for the entire kit because it doesn't make sense to split that up. So this first series is going to be just the unboxing. And then for once I get the uh, the, the second series completed, that will include the review of the entire thing all together. So, that's how this is going to work. So, let's just get right on into looking in the box here. Now, like I said, there are a lot of metallic coated pieces for the inner frame itself. And because of that, the A runner, which is normally has armor pieces and stuff like that, it's been dead. The first few runners are going to be inner frame only, but even the A, it's still, the A is still multicolor, but there's clear pieces. And then the, the more, um, inner, inner frame, if you will, of the, the gold, just the gold plastic before it gets the pieces on top, which will be the, the metallic coated. So that's what the A-frame is. Then we have a couple of, and I'm just going to do these a little bit out of order, because we've got a couple of, which are these two different types of gold metallic, which, which are quite shiny. This one's not, this one here is not as shiny as this one, which is our B-runner, which is huge. And this has our yellow gold, and this is more the white gold. And with these pieces here, looking at it really closely, what this actually has they've done is they've done two layers of coating. The first layer is just silver. And then they were able to selectively place the gold coating on areas of the pieces. So what happens is... In the panel, in, in these gaps between the panels, and I'm going to find one that really shows it. This one right here, I'm bringing it in a little bit closer. 
And let's see here. Let's have the, there's the camera. Um, you can see the underlying silver coating between the panels of the, of the molded piece, which essentially means is that silver undercoating has become the panel lining for these very shiny gold pieces. And then also other places where the, the silver doesn't show, and I don't know if this was intentional or if it was just the way that the manufacturing process happened, but where there, where there's panel lines where there isn't silver showing, they're slightly darker than the surface, uh, gold, which kind of gives it its own panel lining. So for, these gold pieces, and I've, I've looked at this one a little bit closer, and it does on some pieces, but not others, have have some of the um, automatic panel lining on it. So I'm not sure what I'll do with this one. But with this one, I won't be doing any panel lining because I'm just going to let the, the natural way that they put the pieces and apply the coating to stick on there and, and or, you know, to stay visible because it looks really, really good. I mean, it's, it might be hard to tell from the camera and stuff like that, but these look really, really good. Uh, probably the, the most detailed and most um, complex pieces I've ever seen in a kit. So like I said, with this one, this is just kind of a duller, more like a yellow gold um, or white gold, sorry. And I don't know if I'll panel line these or not, I'll decide that when it gets to that point. Because so sometimes I look at the light and it it does look like there's the silver throwing, throwing through, but some of the pieces it doesn't. So I'll figure that out later. So th this is the D and this is the C. So the A runners through C D runners are the metallic pieces of the inner frame. And there are a couple others that are more like these duller pieces, but different colors you know, lighter golds or darker golds and stuff like that, so. Now we have two different E-runners, which are the armor. And, um, you know, the, the, everything else I'll pan line as normal that I do with, with, the, with the models. We have two different... Um, we have two of the F runners, an F1 and an F2, and these look like they're probably going to be inner frame pieces as well because they're just the dark, the, the gray. This piece here on this other runner just fell off and I have it in the box, so nothing got lost or anything like that if you're wondering why that's like that. We have this little runner, which I'll show now because it was just kind of on top. And this is the hand, and it, it's, a, it's a typical kind of almost real grade hand where the digits have their own um, articulation through ball joints. I'm hoping that it's a lot better than the real grade because anyone that's worked with the real grade hands know that the fingers and, and stuff like that will pop off very easily, and hopefully this is not that way. And then we have two identical G, which are more of the, you know, looks like it's just plain gold, non-shiny inner frame stuff. We have two H runners, an H1 and an H2. Looks like I got them backwards, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and this looks like it's, looks like it's wing pieces, maybe some armor pieces for darker areas and stuff like that. We've got our two blue eye runners, and these also look like they're backpacks slash wings and such like that. We have kind of a super light gray here with the J runners. This is armor and such. So it looks like the color, um, 
the color is going to be nice. The color separation is going to be nice on this because we also have this kind of purple gray. And these look like wing pieces and probably some other backpack areas and such like that. Because these look like thrusters. And we have our two, for the red pieces, two L runners. And these are probably, these look like they're just detailed pieces. Probably the head and the chest and the feet and stuff like that. And of course, you know, this being basically a, uh, a primary mobile suit, um, it's going to follow the same primary mobile suit colors to an extent where you got your red, your yellow, your blue, and your white. Although I didn't see any yellow, so maybe the gold is taking the place of the yellow. And the nice thing is, is this does come with its own stand, which is quite intricate. So that's a good thing. And then we have our effects pieces here. Uh, this, these are, I guess, shield effects, I would say, that the, the energy shield that goes on the arms. And of course, we've got our beams for our beam weapon. And one interesting thing they come, they provide is they provide a, uh, stand, uh, a, I'm sorry, a runner stand, so you can kind of fold this in and stuff like that to hold on to your runners. But there are so many runners on there, there is absolutely no way you're going to fit all of these in. And because there's so many runners, there's so much detail. The um, the number of runners that each area is going to be working with when I look through the manual is far going to, even if you double are able to double up, you know, say put eight in instead of just four, this may not hold enough runners to cover all the ones you're working with on a single area um, of the of the kit. But it, it's nice that they kind of included that. But I don't know how helpful that's going to be just because of the sheer scale of this kit. Now, one nice thing also is they do give stickers and decals. But the great thing is that these are water slide decals, so no need to get water slides from any other source, and they even have some metallic water slides, which is beautiful. Um, and instead of, ha for the color correction, instead of just having the, you know, the, the shiny stickers, these are actually plastic stickers, so they actually will look much better on the kit itself. It'll look like it's just a part of the model and the color separation, stuff like that, so you know, depending upon where they're placed and how they're shown, they may, you may not even see the edges and stuff like that. So hopefully that's going to be the case because I've heard that with when they provide the plastic stickers just because they, they want it to look seamless. And then the other part, and these are for the inner frame construction, is these are metallic etched, I guess, stickers because they're sticky, but they're not really stickers. They're, they're metal, they're etched with a pattern, and these go on to the inner frame in places to give a little bit more depth and shine places where uh, it might not be possible to do with a, even a coated plastic and stuff like that. So it's going to look really nice with these. So, and I would suggest keeping them in the bag that they provide here so that everything is protected. I mean, there is a protective film on the actual um, sticker set itself, but keeping it in the bag until you need it. It's just going to keep everything safer anyway. And then we've got the manual. Oh, I forgot to do the outer box. I apologize, but it's a typical thing where you have the cover art, and then you've got a whole bunch of poses and stuff like that that are placed on there to show how the the effects of the kit and stuff like that. I apologize for not showing that beforehand. I think I was more concerned with explaining how the uh, the videos would be produced and released. But also, normally the pictures on the cover are reproduced in the manual anyway, so especially with a kit with this big of a manual. So, And yeah, it looks like they are. And as I described before, this is how intricate the... Um, 
the inner frame is going to be where you know each of these is a, is just a layer of more detail similar to what came out for the perfect grade unleashed gundam many years ago and the nice thing is that except for like maybe a couple of exceptions and the exceptions being where you probably wouldn't be doing panel lining anyway if you wanted to panel line stuff. It's all PS plastic. The exceptions being is that the hand is a mix between ABS and uh, polypropylene PP. And the effects are PET plastic, which is typical for the clear, you know, effects type stuff when it's, you know, not the beams and such. So you could be, you would be able to do the panel lining in just about everywhere. The only place that you might want to just make sure that your panel liner won't affect is the ABS. And then they have all the instructions. Now this has kit does, which is very nice, has a lot of undergating, which is a way of being able to attach the pieces to the runner in such a way that where the nub attaches, it won't show on the computed model and for something this detailed and this uh nice you, that that's great that they've done that i don't know if it, i doubt it's every piece but many of the main pieces um they'll be that way in my experience with the undergating with bandai is that if they've chosen not to undergate a piece it's because wherever that nub is attached isn't going to show on the final piece even if it's at the side of the piece like normal and then there's also this little section here on how to um, prepare and work with the etching stickers. One small thing that I would point out is that one of the steps here is to remove kind of the external um, plate, which, you know, for there, there's the, these stickers here are kind of cut onto the cut into the the metal and just like any other sticker there's there's a there's a um you know an edge to it which you know the outer um the outer sheet will be uh not visible sorry i have it upside i have it upside down no i didn't i had it right um but the very first thing you 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 do so you don't damage the the etch stickers is you remove all the outer part the you know the, the part that isn't part of the stickers now, unfortunately, the numbers have been printed on that part that you remove. So just, I mean, it's probably going to be real easy to tell um, which stickers go where from the pictures, because I've looked in here, and, and they do a pretty good job of showing you a picture of the decal when they tell you where it's going to go. Um, but definitely... You want to preserve this part that you peeled away just so you can do reference if you need to, if there's any questions as to which number is which which uh, decal and stuff like that. Because there are slight differences, especially looking at these triangular ones. There, One seems to be an isosceles triangle where the other one isn't and has slightly different, you know, angles on the uh, edges and stuff like that. So... Just it, definitely don't discard the piece that you take off when working with these stickers. And the manual is nice. And as I mentioned before, you know, the, the first thing you do is you go through and you build the, the inner frame and then everything else gets put on top. So the backpack, the armor assembly, and the weapons. And, you know, what's typical with some of your larger kits and is actually becoming typical for your smaller kits as well. As you get into each section, they'll tell you what runners you need to work with for that piece. You know, the runners and the, and the um, stickers and such like that. And one thing that I've noticed is there's a lot of checkpoints just to make sure things are oriented the way they're supposed to. So definitely pay attention to that. And there's only one place I could find in this entire manual where you had a choice on which piece you wanted to put somewhere. So we've got a yellow clear piece, but if you didn't, and this is in the head, if you didn't want to use the yellow clear piece and this symbol here, which is the circle and triangle with a slash through it, is you can choose which piece 
to uh, work put on the model. So you can either do the white gold piece or the yellow clear piece. And this is the only place where that is. Because once I saw that, I'm like, oh, let me find all the other places where I need to ch get to choose. And that's the only place. <laughs> so um, it's nice that they, they did that for that one little detail. I'll choose which one I want to use when I put it together, because depending. Um, and another thing that I really noticed is that they let you know in the manual when you're done with either one of the sticker sets or one of the um one of the runners they'll have let's see if I can find it they will tell you at they'll have like there'll be a little trash can symbol and they'll tell you that you're now done. Where is it? This right here. They have this little trash can symbol, and then it'll tell you, like, here, all the etching stickers have been used once you get to that step. Or, you know, and, and then also the runners. They'll, they'll tell you as you go along, like, uh, here, you, you finish runner C, and all that kind of, which is really nice, especially if there's cases where, if I look at the beginning here, well, there's not a lot of X's, maybe there are a couple, but especially if it's a case where you're not using every piece on the runner, instead of having to refer all the way back here to say, oh, let me see where all the X's are when you have extra pieces on the runners that you never used, it's nice to be told here, now you can don't have to worry about that one. And one thing I should also point out, I, I was calling them plastic stickers, but they actually call them in the manual, and that's these right here. I mean, they are plastic stickers, but they call them metallic 3D stickers. Um, so I just didn't want to confuse anybody with that. So these here are the metallic 3D stickers. So, I mean, I'm like I said, there's going to be two series of videos for this model build, there's going to be the inner frame build, and then the separate series for the everything else build, and the, um, and those will be coming out in, you know, the every other week, you know, so in other words, the, the week that you're viewing this, two weeks from there is when the, uh, the everything else, the external is what I called it in the, for the video, what I'll call it for the video description. Those videos will come out two weeks later. So, thank you so much for watching. I am so looking forward to building this, and I will see you for the next one. Thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. If you would like notifications as to when new videos are posted to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you do have time, please do enjoy one of the videos that are popping up around my head.